Clicking test cable triggers one measurement on the cable, displays the result, and stops. If the cable compares perfectly to a model cable, as it does here, we can be fairly confident that this cable will work properly in its intended application. However, bad crimps, cold solder joints, or broken wires may cause intermittent connections that allow the cable to work properly in one position, but fail when it's moved to a different position or when it's compressed in an equipment cabinet. Use Cableize continuous test function to check for intermittent connections. First, click the CONT tab you see next to the test data summary box. This reveals the continuous test controls. Then, obtain model cable data by learning the cable currently attached to the tester or loading a model cable from the database. In this case, we'll learn the good cable that's already attached to the tester. Once learned, remove the model cable and attach the cable under test. Click Continuous Test or press the Test button on the fixture to begin testing. This function constantly repeats the test loop. Once started, you see the pass indicator come on over here. Also, the number of tests completed is shown in this box, and the number of errors detected, if any, is shown here. Also, the wiring display screen is completely blank in the absence of errors. Now, flex the cable during this test to try to induce a problem. If an intermittent connection disrupts continuity, a tone sounds and the intermittent wire appears highlighted in the display. The tone sounds every time the test data differs from the match data. In this case, pin 7 on the right connector intermittently shorts to the shield when the right connector is flexed. Notice that the continuous test button changes to stop during the test. Click stop or press the test button on the tester when finished. The errors remain visible for further analysis. You may immediately repeat the test by clicking continuous test again. For a 128 test point system, continuous test cycles from one to three times per second, depending on your computer. During one cycle, every test point is measured with respect to every other point, thus checking every wire in the cable for an intermittent connection, as well as for potential shorts to any unused pins you may have on the connector. As you flex the cable, be sure to allow enough time for the tester to complete one full cycle before flexing the cable in another position. You can tell here, from the number of tests incrementing, how much time is taken between each test. If you suspect a particular conductor of having an intermittent connection, you may highlight that conductor in the schematic and, if you're using an M3 tester, continuously measure the resistance of that particular conductor as you flex the cable. First, to do this, we turn off the continuous test mode, then highlight the conductor of interest. In this case, I'm going to highlight pin 15. Measure the resistance of the wire by clicking the resistance tool. Because the resistance was within the allowable threshold, no error is detected. Now I'll click the Continuous Resistance Tool button and start to flex the cable. As long as there, as there are no errors, nothing is indicated in the resistance column. As I flex the wire, we see the resistance increase, begin to change, and then drop back to a good connection. This clearly indicates an intermittent problem in this conductor. Because cable eye scans only one conductor in this case, the cycle time is much faster than for a full scan of the entire cable. You may also use the continuous resistance tool to check resistors as they are exposed to changes in heat, or potentiometers as you adjust the shaft. In this case, 
we see an error indicating that the connection completely disappeared for a moment.